I got a question, Erica. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I did do that for a long period of time. Um, and so I guess the question for you is with the coaching, mm -hmm. you know, what else helps you get past that? Because, you know, just that little component of I'm sorry or putting yourself down or always feeling like you're, you know, hindering or, or, or causing someone else, whatever it is, how do you do more than change that? Like, how do you, cause it's just not something that's, that's deep. Like that's deep, deep, deep. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, if it's coming from someone uh, that you respect, you practice it. You practice it until you feel it, until it becomes natural for you. And it's really a part of really faking it until you really make it. Because if you pretend it, a lot of times people are going based off of perception. You know, they're not, you know, masterful, you know, not mat they may be manipulators, but not masterful manipulate. They're going by perception and a lot of what they believe about themselves and projecting on you. So they don't know <laughs> that you're really not that confident. They don't know. They're not confident themselves. They have their own mess going on. But really practicing. And if you, if you have a mentor who uh, pours information into you and helps you along, giving you some tips on how you can further your career, um, then practice it, right? You know, and you, and you know, lots of times we notice that when we're doing something, we notice that it's weird <laughs> or we shouldn't be saying it. So when someone you respect uh, kind of gives you some tips, some different alternatives on how you can handle a situation, practice it. And see how it fits. And if it makes sense to you, do it. Just keep practicing it that way until it just becomes automatic for you to react like that. That's what I've had to do. And there are many a times when I go places and I'll be, and I've shared that with y'all before, I'll be at home or I'll be in my car before I even get out. And I have to talk to myself or I may call a family member or a friend and laugh or kind of get a boost of confidence to actually walk through that door. But if you see me there, you're not going to necessarily know that that's what I had to do. So I'm sharing a lot of this because I want other people to know that how they feel isn't weird. A lot, a lot of people feel like that. I think most people feel like that. One of the things I think that, um, and I'm, I'm, I always use me as the the uh, example is um, the, the self-awareness piece. It, this, let's look at it from the standpoint of a meter. The meter on and, and self-awareness is a very broad meter. And in some respects, it's a limitless meter. And one of the things that one of the components of, of self-awareness is the autocorrect. So we, we, I know, Erica, you were talking about referencing and speaking to someone and how you were unsure about it and the, the confidence level. I think with each exchange you have, whether it be with that particular person or with someone else, there's always, there's tapes you're going to keep replaying, you know, the last exchange, you know, what was the last exchange? So like with this person you were talking, I think it was Marty you mentioned. Um, the next time you talk to Marty, you'll remember the previous conversation and you'll be able to autocorrect on the fly. Mm -hmm. Now, another part of this is, because we're always talking about the, the plus and the minus of this is, the practicing of limited practice, eliminating negative self-talk. So you mentioned that having conversations with yourself. I have a gazillion conversations with myself and it's more from the pushing me forward and put and pushing me upward as opposed to pushing me down. And that's, you know, we, when we move away from the self-imposed, self-imposed barriers and beliefs to a more self-aware, positive state of mind that has intentions of doing good. I think that works for you, but you have to keep that you have to, you have to continually keep that a part of your process. And as long as you don't lose sight of that, you're going to, I, I, like I said, I'm using me as the example, mm -hmm. the growth is you're going to benefit from that growth. Um, and like I said, I'm to, today, I'm living proof of that. You know, where, how I feel about myself today and what, where, and remembering where I was versus where I am, it's, it's a joy to wake up now.
it is literally a joy for me to wake up in the morning, regardless of what's on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm back to that point. 